Yay, the shitter is going. Master Dean here, changing the engine mount. <laughs> Gonna be famous soon, Dean. <laughs> There's the fucked engine mount, you can see it's ripped off the place, so we're gonna slot a new one in. Here's the old one, boys and girls. I think we can still sell it on eBay. <laughs> Bargain, mate. Dude, some weird shit is going down. Basically, we've changed the engine mount. I thought it was all gonna be nice and smooth. Oh, fucking hell, it never ends with these fucking demons. And we have a engine light showing, and it's fucking choking. How many more is she doing? Uh, so before panicking too much, uh, I've noticed that first of all, when we move the engine, this, um, air intake pipe split so I've bodged that up no air is coming through that but then I've noticed that we have uh, this hanging off which is not ideal um, basically it's quite common with BMWs this plastic gets old and brittly and when you start moving shit it, start, it snaps so we're gonna show you how to bodge it up very quickly Okay, I'm done. Alright, sir, I just need to check inside your asshole. I don't need you wiping my ass for me. I'm a grown man. Big boy. I took a big boy. Yes. Not even bodge it up, but fix it. First, you pull out what's remaining in there. There you go. It's out. So now, you get yourself a uh, piece of pipe. So we found this um, bicycle brake pump, so the idea is to connect this bit to that bit. Now, it's not going in uh, because there's still some of that plastic in there. So get yourself a screwdriver and just uh, drill through like a path for yourself. Okay, here's how I bodged it up. So I've straightened out um, that bike brake tube, hammered it in there, in this bit because it wasn't quite going in there, and the other bit actually slotted in perfectly in the pipe. So not perfect fix, but you know, I mean, this guy's getting overhaul in here anyway. So we'll sort all this out later, as soon as, as long as it drives.
Yo, what's happening boys and girls? We just got the uh, E65 from uh, the paint shop. We sprayed the bonnet. All nice and smooth. We sprayed the bumper. This we did ourselves as you can remember. Looking pretty good, even though we fucked it up a couple of times, but did those poles in red look nice and mean to accompany the red badge. Gave it a uh, deep polish all around. I washed it and took it down country lanes and already fucked it up. But the reason we took it down country lanes is we got another project, another Celica 1998 this time, so that will be coming onto the show. But this is looking pretty neat now. Right, next thing we're gonna get Duke to do um, is sand down all of this and spray them. Um, satin satin black let's see what he's doing at the moment in there yo yuki duke how's it going motherfuckers right that's the finishing bits from the e34 nearly ready but guys i mean this uh, kind of surface is very hard to uh, get perfect so best thing to do is sand it down as much as you can uh, and then primer it with a couple of coats and then primer will make uh, the surface harder and then give it a sand again and that will make it nice and smooth so we'll see how it goes a bit later right so we've um, painted the um, doorstep thing as you remember it looked horrible it was all messed up and scratched obviously so we're gonna put some 3M protective film over it to hopefully prevent it from happening. Right, so cut off uh, a piece that you need because we've got like a ridge here like this. We're gonna wrap it starting from here and uh, warm it up so it folds into the ridge nicely. Yo, our motto is never to waste time. So while I've been sitting in the car all day yesterday, uh, flushing all the petrol out of it, which my wife has kindly um, put in there. Uh... took this panel off and I've scraped all the um, crappy rubbery thing still left on there but basically the way you scrape it off is to get a credit card or something like this and just you know scratch it and you see it coming off then I've rubbed it down with some tea cut um, with then polished it up with some interior car polish uh, it looks alright, it's gonna go um, by your feet, so you're not gonna see it, but it looks a lot better than it was. And with this, you remember me painting them. There was no point painting them on the mud black, actually, because this is uh, this 3M tape is gloss. But anyway, we put it on and it looks pretty neat. And when you get to this stage, you have to... Um, it take, can take a while, pierce all the bubbles, and then just... Keep on rubbing it, warming it, like you see, like this, and all these white bits are going away. Might take some time, I mean, it's not going to matter too much because it's going to be by your legs, but, uh, you know, to make it look very nice, spot on, I would, um, I'm going to spend another hour or so on it. And then uh, do the same on these. So yeah, that's the plan. Alright, so we've um, installed the um, foot trim, looking much better, I mean it's nowhere near perfect, you can see a bit of bubbles, not even bubbles, but we pierced the bubbles, but I mean they're going to be dusty anyway, uh, but it's very good protection, nothing's going to happen to them, they're going to stay like this for a long time. So, all back in there looking much better, obviously at some stage I'm going to do something about all this. This looks crap now. But 
for the time being. Got bigger priorities to sort out. Right, next. I'm gonna get rid of this old fly eye and work on some new ones. So you literally just peel it off, you know, however you can. I'll show you in a minute. See, once you've warmed it up, it'll peel off like so. So when it stops peeling off, just warm it up a bit more. And that's the quickest way, rather than scraping. So if you haven't got a hair dryer, you have to scrape like I showed you the first way, but that's pain in the ass. This is a lot easier. All right, to do some tinting, you're gonna need some soapy water. I just put a bit of fairy liquid in there, don't make it too soapy. Best to get your uh, cut off a piece of mesh that we're gonna put on. Gonna need a squidgy and a standing knife and a hair dryer or a heat gun. So some of that, and we're gonna follow this line. Right, so you make the surface a bit wet and the um, inside of your film or mesh or whatever a bit wet lay it on and then just start straightening it out with your fingers pushing out all these creases now with mesh it's a lot easier than with um with kind of solid film You have to sometimes pull and stretch while warming up. There you go, pretty much done. Uh, just push out these these bits with your squidgy while warming them up. So it takes about ten minutes per line. Now you're ready to care, carefully cut it out. Then you get your squidgy and push in all the edges. It's much better to do it while you're warming it up because the adhesive works a lot better when it's warm. So I'll carry on and then cut this off with a Stanley knife down the line and then show you the finishing result. Sorted. Looking good. I think I'm gonna do the other, redo the other one because this one's now old and the mesh is a different pattern. I don't know. And that one looks a bit darker now. Yeah, that one looks much better. I think this one needs to be done as well. But yeah, really easy. Okay, the mesh is done on both sides. Nice and easy job. Then I'm gonna put the lights obviously back in. It takes five minutes. So next, to finish off for today, we're gonna take out and tint these uh, fog lights. As you can see, they're cracked from all the stones in the road, so um, uh, instead of buying new ones, make it look pretty cool, I think. Um, I'm gonna put some yellow film on it. Uh, oh, this grill is chipped now. I think I'm gonna touch it up and then put some protective 3M tape on it. They're very easy to take out. You just pop like an Allen key or something in there. Pull this out, and then just one screw over there. Okay, a bit of degreaser, white spirit, and that elbow grease does the job. So all your glue residue has come off. 
Now the reason why I'm tinting these is not to look like a pimp. I mean, yeah, that's the reason as well. Uh, but the main reason is, so if you can see, these slides have quite deteriorated a bit. I mean, I don't really know how to polish them, and I can't be asked really. I think they'll cool a bit tinted, so um, that's a step I've taken to overcome that problem. Right, what I'm planning to do is obviously tin this yellow, the indicator bit. Um, and then on top, I'll put mesh. Give that a try, see what it looks like. It looks like. Okay, I've used heat um, all the time when taking this one off, and that's the difference. You have to do a lot less work cleaning it afterwards. So, you best to use some heat. The quickest way to get rid of any bubbles, get a nice thin needle and um, pierce them. And then with a bit of heat, just push out all the air and water. You're not going to see the piercings afterwards because um, the film will contract and it will look good. Debatch, debatch this car. I'm gonna take this uh, badge off and uh, replace it with another one. Now, lots of people take the piss out of these M badges. Uh, I mean, I use it because uh, there are some scuffs underneath there when someone previously debadged it, so I use it to uh, cover it. Plus, it has got a lot of uh, M Sport bits on it, so you know. Look, geez, M Sport, but you know, uh, I'm gonna show you how to take it off. Uh, even if you just want to debadge it and put nothing on again, right? You're gonna need some um, garden wire, so some cheap stuff for a quid. Uh, make sure this garden wire is covered in some plastic uh, because um, if you get if you get steel one, uh, there is a risk of scratching your paintwork while you're doing this. So uh, just get this nice plastic plastic coated one then you're gonna need a heat gun oh pause it there <laughs> you're gonna need a heat gun and you're gonna warm this up as much as possible this badge is metal so there's no risk of melting it so uh, you can't overdo it really I mean you can melt your paintwork so don't don't do it too much so first start kind of heating it under there Can touch feel it. Right, guys, we fucked up there because the um, uh, film ran out in camera or the memory or whatever it's called. So we're taking the badge off. But anyway, uh, you know you, you've seen the principle. Stick a wire under there with um, with all this residue and just heat it, heat it up and push it with your finger. That's the best way, really. When it's warm, it comes off very nicely. You know, I'm not gonna do it. I don't care about taking it all off completely because I'm gonna stick another one on there but just to recoup we're gonna show you how to do it just on here so here's another badge so warming it up wire under there yeah. As you're warming so very simple warm it pull it down and here it's all off very very simple warm it a bit more and you can use a glue remover but just push it off with your finger it's a lot easier see all comes off like it's never been there that's there it 